Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, we're looking at DCC-X. A couple of years ago, I made a video about Greg Berman's DCC++ system, which is a build-it-yourself DCC command station. It was easy to set up, really powerful, but the best thing was that it only cost around 40 pounds to buy everything you needed. And most of that was for the power supply, which you might have already had. Commercial DCC controllers can cost hundreds of pounds and put a lot of people off getting into digital control. So DCC++ was a game changer and made the technology accessible to a lot more people. Recently, I became aware of a group of incredibly smart people who have taken the idea of a DIY budget-friendly open source DCC command station and moved it on to the next level. It's called DCCX with X standing for extended and have taken the concept of DCC++ but completely rebuilt it making it even easier to put together and added tons more functionality. Some people might take one look at the electronics and think it all looks too complicated. So in this video, I want to demonstrate how quick and easy it is to set this up. There's no soldering or programming. I promise you it's basically plugging a few things in and downloading some software and anyone can do this. We'll start with the most basic setup and then add in Wi-Fi, which connects to a phone app. If you've got the kit in front of you, then feel free to follow along with this video. But if you find that I'm going a bit fast or you'd prefer to follow a written guide, then more detailed step-by-step -step tutorials can be found on the DCCX website at dcc-x.com. Before we get started, if you're finding this video useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for loads more model railway content. Okay, let's get going. The starting point with DCCX is the website, which is gonna be our reference guide through the process. In the menu, there's a page at the top, which explains more about the DCCX system and what it does. So it's worth having a skim through this. And the second page in the menu is about choosing your comfort level. And I think this is great because they've obviously realized they're going to attract a range of abilities and interest levels. So they've put everything into one of three categories. The conductors who really just want to get on, build the base station and play trains. The tinkerers who might want to expand on things and use some more advanced functionality and the engineers who might want to take a look at the underlying code and understand how it all works. But for today's video, we're going to be a conductor. So let's move on to the command station section and dive straight into the purchasing parts area. Everything you need is set out here and they've even got links to the parts that they suggest. We're going to need an Arduino type board and I'm using this Eligu Mega 2560. We need a motor shield to go on top of the Arduino and I'm using this shield from Deke Robot. It's got an L298P on it with two channels that can handle two amps each. We'll skip over items three and four for now because they relate to the bits needed for Wi-Fi and we're not gonna be using Wi-Fi just yet. We need a power supply and this is a 15 volt three amp supply, similar to the one you might use for a laptop and you may already have one of these lying around at home. You'll need to select the voltage of the power supply depending on the scale you're working with. The National Model Railroad Association recommend 14 volts on the track for a HO or 00 scale layout. So this 15 volt supply should be fine for me. I've also got this socket which connects to the power supply and it has a positive and negative screw terminal on it. If we quickly pause here, I'll put the cost of the items we've seen so far on screen and in total they come to £48, which I think has to be one of the cheapest DCC controllers out there. And if you've already got a suitable power supply, then it's even cheaper. For my demonstration, we're not going to need a separate power supply for the Arduino because we're going to connect it to a computer using a USB cable and it will take the power from that. But the USB cable that comes with the Arduino Mega is a bit short, so I've just got myself a longer one. I've got some wire to connect it all up. I've got two short pieces and two longer pieces. And I don't have a piece of track, but I do have my rolling road. And on that, I've got my DCC sound fitted locomotive, which I know works and is on address 10. You're also going to need a few tools, a small screwdriver and a craft knife as a minimum. If your wires aren't already stripped at the ends like mine are, then you might want some wire strippers and a multimeter is handy, but not essential. So that's everything we need. Let's move on to assembly. Step one is super important, so don't skip this. On the back of the motor driver board, find the connection that says V in connect and break the electrical connection here. I've already done this on this board. I used a craft knife to just score over the connection a few times, being careful not to cut too deep into the board. You should visually be able to see if the connection is broken, but if you've got a multimeter, then you can use the resistance setting to make 100% sure that there's no connection there. If there was still a connection, then the multimeter resistance would read zero. It's not zero, so I've definitely managed to cut the trace connection successfully. 
Step two, we're gonna plug the motor driver board into the Arduino board. So carefully align the pins and ease the board into place. It can be a bit tricky to get all the pins aligned, so take your time on this and it might not go in all the way. On mine, where the screw terminals have been soldered in, they hit the top of the Arduino's power socket, but it will still work just fine. Step three, I'm gonna take my short wires and connect one end to my socket and then the other end to the motor drivers where it says V in and ground. Check that you've connected the positives to the same wire and the negatives or grounds to the same wire. I've got red as positive and black as negative. Don't plug in any power supply just yet though. Step four, I'm gonna use my long set of wires to connect the A terminals on my motor driver board to the rolling road track and it doesn't matter which way round these go. The B terminal is used for a programming track and for changing CV settings on your decoders, and we're not gonna be using that for now. Step five, I'm going to plug the Arduino into my computer using my USB cable. Step six, it's time to install the software and there are instructions here for both Windows, Mac OS, and Linux users. I'm on Windows, so I'll show you that process. Navigate to the install the software page in the menu. Scroll down and click on the X installer app link. Click on the automated installer and it will download a zip file. Open the zip file and extract the contents to a folder. Open that folder and run the xinstaller.exe file. Windows will most likely need your permission to run the software and once the window opens, you'll need to give it a second to initialize. Now we can set up our command station. Select command station X in the top drop down box, then select the type of board you're using in the second drop down box, in my case, a mega. In the next drop down box, unless you're using one of the ones specifically listed, just select the Arduino motor shield. Then select the port that the board is connected to. Mine was automatically detected and appeared in the list on COM5. We're not going to use Wi-Fi connections just yet, but it's worth setting up at this stage anyway. Under network, it'll have a host name DCCX and server port 2560. And under Wi-Fi, click enable Wi-Fi, give the network a name and a password. This will allow us to connect to a Wi-Fi board directly when we add one later on. Hit compile and upload. This is where the DCCX team have made life really easy for us. The software will automatically pull together all the bits of code it needs and upload them to the board for you so you no longer have to use the Arduino IDE or even see the code if you don't want to. It's still all open source though, so if you did ever want to look at the code that's being uploaded, then you still can. The software might need to download the latest code library, so you might have to give it a few permissions along the way, but in total, the upload takes less than 20 seconds, and at the end, it tells you that it's all been uploaded successfully. So now it's time to test it all out, and at first we're going to do this using the DCCX web throttle. Close down the uploader app and go back to the website. Navigate to the test your setup page, Scroll down until you see the Run X Web Throttle Now button. Click it and once that opens, it's time to plug in your power supply. Once the power supply is connected in the Web Throttle, select Connect DCC++ X in the top right hand corner. A list of connected devices should open up in the top left and you just need to select your Arduino. Mine is on COM5, select it and click Connect. Then click the Power On slider button and you should see lights appear on the motor driver where I'm pointing. Now we can select our locomotive by going to the locomotive ID box and inputting the address of the decoder, which for my Hornby 4P compound is 10. So I'll type that in and press the button. Now we can use the throttle slider to drive the model. This one takes a short time to get going and then we can use the function buttons to control the sounds. You've got full speed control in here and you can also change the direction. The only slight issue is that the bell function button is mapped to the main sound function on this model. I think that's because this throttle defaults to a US setup, but I'm sure that's something that can be changed if you wanted to keep using this throttle as your controller, but we're just using it to test that the command station works. When I'm done, we can just turn off the power and disconnect the boards using the buttons. So hopefully that shows just how easy it is to put together DCCX and get it working with the web throttle. Now I want to show you how easy it is to add in the hardware for a Wi-Fi connection.
We don't need to change anything with the software because we already set up the Wi-Fi settings when we uploaded the code earlier. Before we fit the Wi-Fi board, we need to disconnect the main power supply and the USB connection. Now we can plug in our Wi-Fi shield. A Wi-Fi board should cost less than £10 and the DCCX website recommends the Maker Fabs ESP8266 board and this looks like the simplest board to use, but I wasn't able to get hold of one in the UK at the time of filming. They have a list of suitable boards on the website and I already had a Wang Tongzi board so decided to use that. It turns out that the Wang Tongzi boards aren't ideal. They've got a few quality issues, but the DCCX team have kindly provided notes on how to get it working properly. So once we've plugged it in, I need to use two small jumper wires to connect these two pins on the Wi-Fi shield to pins 18 and 19 on the Mega. No big deal and it will work, but it's not great practice because we're mixing 5V and 3.3V logic levels. Now you need to install a free app on your smartphone or tablet called Engine Driver. This is the program we're going to use to control the trains. Once that's installed, we can connect up the power again. I'm still using the USB connection to power the Arduino, but that's all we're using it for now. All the control is going to go via the Wi-Fi board, so you could power it another way. Now in my phone, I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi connections and find the Wi-Fi board, which should show up as a separate network. You might have to put in a password, but I've previously connected to the board and my phone has remembered it from last time. Once you're connected, open up the Engine Driver app. When I've opened the app, it's automatically discovered the server, so I'm just going to click on it to connect. Once connected, click on the three dots in the top right hand corner and go to power. From here, we can turn on the power to the track. Exit the power screen and click on select. Here we can connect to our loco by entering the decoder address, which for me is 10 and click acquire. And just like before, we can now use the throttle at the top to control the speed and direction. And we've got the function buttons to control the sounds. Again, in the default settings, the bell function is linked to the main background sounds, but that's no big deal. And I think this is something you can change. Using this method, you can connect a number of different devices to your command station Wi-Fi network and give yourself multiple controllers. So that's a very basic introduction to the DCCX command station. And I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to set up both the wired USB controller and the wireless app controller versions. This has to be the cheapest way of creating a command station that in terms of functionality rivals controllers that are four or five times the price. If you wanted to know more, then there's loads of information on the DCCX website. And they've also got a community discord server with hundreds of active members if you need any support. I'll put links to both of those in the show more section along with affiliate links for all the components that I've used in this video. The DCCX team are constantly working on new functionality and ways to make this even better. And I hope to show off some of that advanced functionality such as controlling accessories and automation in future videos. Thanks to Kevin Smith from the DCCX development team for sharing his knowledge with me and answering all my questions. And huge thanks to all the members and patrons whose names are on the screen now for supporting the channel and who make videos like this possible. If you've built DCCX and are using it, then let me know what you think in the comments. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.